This is a farm. It has cows, sheep, and even some buffalo. But this isn't just any farm, it's F1 World Champion Jody Schechter's farm. But I'm not here to look at some rusty combine harvester, I'm here to check out one of the most innovative cars to have ever graced a racetrack, the Tyrrell P34, the six-wheeled F1 car. By the mid-70s, F1 tech was stagnating a little. Every team, bar two, was using the same 3-litre Cosworth DFE engine, the same Hewling gearbox and Goodyear tyres at all four corners. Tyrrell searched for a way to play the system, and this was the result. So, four wheels at the front and two at the back. Why did Tyrrell go for this layout? Well, having more rubber at the front means it has more front-end grip which means it can turn into corners better and enter corners faster. The tiny 10-inch front wheels are tucked within the confines of the front bodywork, which means the frontal area of the car is decreased, which decreases drag. Also, the small wheel and suspension components created less lift than normal sized components. That meant Tyrrell could decrease the front aero, and altogether, these aerodynamic changes amounted to the equivalent of a 40 brake horsepower advantage enough of an advantage to win. Blasting onto the scene in the fourth race of the 1976 season, the car qualified well but sadly failed to finish. The P34 then went on to take a pole and a 1-2 finish at the Swedish Grand Prix that year, with Schechter taking the top step on the podium. Jody, thank you so much for letting us come and film your car. What are your memories of this car? It broke a lot. <laughs> Uh, it was fun to drive, you could do anything with it. It was sort of like a long wheelbase and a short wheelbase. You could put it sideways in the, on the straight if you wanted to. But as soon as you turned into a corner, one little wheel lifted up, so it didn't. But when I look back, I did more. I had better results than I remember, really. And how did it behave? Was it an oversteery car, understeery car? My style was generally oversteer, and you could, over, you could drive the sideways all the time if you wanted to. Um, yeah, uh, the thing that it, it broke quite a lot, so that was if towards the middle of the season or further on, it got, it got to a stage where I wasn't really feeling comfortable at all. So while we're here, can we start it up? Um, yes. With the good came the bad, especially with the car's braking performance. The small wheels made for small brakes, and that small surface area meant they would overheat and fade very quickly during a race. Not what you want in an F1 car. Also, the small wheels were susceptible to locking up, which meant Jody would have to lift off the brakes to get the car turned into a corner, effectively defeating the purpose of having all that front end grip. Another problem Tyrrell had to solve was making sure the drivers could see the wheels when racing so they could place the car exactly where they wanted to. The problem was the cockpit was very high and the wheels were very small so they couldn't see them. So the solution was to put portholes in either side of the cockpit so the drivers could peek through and see exactly what the wheels were doing. Pretty cool solution. Although this was a handy solution, the glass would quickly get covered in grime and dirt blocking a view through to the wheels. And at Anderstop in 76, Schechter was alarmed at what he managed to see through that pane of glass. And there's one story that I have to bring up, Anderstop 76, yeah. what happened? Well, I was going through an S and one of the wheels flew off. One of the left fronts flew off. So I drove back, it wasn't a problem. Stopped there and I just say, dear God, and sat in and said, well, what is it like? I said, it's a bit of understeer, just, <laughs> and then started laughing, really. So they... So you, uh, could you see that through the window? Yeah, I, I can't it? remember. I think see and then seeing it, you know, just uh, rolling off, off the... What's in there, yeah. This car comes from a time when genuine leaps in technology could be made. 
Not the odd 10th here or there, but chunks taken out of lap times by eureka moments of engineering. Where now technological advancements are incremental, the regulations used to be loose enough to allow cars like this to exist. And, in my opinion, the sport needs to get back to those less restrictive days, when every car was full of engineering potential. To this day, this Tyrrell is the only car to have raced and won an F1 with more than four wheels. Williams, Ferrari and March all tested cars with four rear-driven wheels, but the tech never really took off and cars with more than four wheels were subsequently banned, a ruling that is still in place today. In time, Tyrrell became BAR, which became Honda, which became Braun, which finally became Mercedes F1, the team that is currently at the top of the race engineering tree. They have their powerful V6 engine and dramatic aero today, but 43 years ago, their direct predecessor opted for something altogether more radical.